there it is, the classic mullet. Can you believe that these are coming back into style? I still get made fun of for the mullet that I had in high school. But today we're not talking about mullets, we're going to be talking about mallets. We're going to do an easy to make wooden mallet that should just take a few hours. So let's get started with this build. So this project, just like I said, should only take a few hours. So this would be an excellent build to do on the weekend. It's also a great way to use some of those scrap pieces of exotic wood that you probably have laying around your shop. So let's go rummage through my scrap pile and see what I can find. So in my shop, I've got a variety of different species of wood here that I like to keep because they're a little bit too big to throw away. And they're great for a project like this. So I'm gonna pick a couple of pieces of wood out of these bins and then we'll get started. So after sifting through my wood, I found three pieces of wood that I think will be an excellent choice for this mallet. I've got some leopard wood here, I've got some zebra wood here, and I've got a piece of hard maple. And you can really see how this leopard wood transforms with just a little bit of spit. And I'm super stoked to use this leopard wood as I've had it in my shop for over three years. So if we look at the thicknesses of these three boards, you can see that they're all different widths. And this leopard wood is S4S, which means surfaced on four sides, and it's three quarters of an inch thick. So we need to mill the other two pieces down to three quarters of an inch thick. And if you're using scrap wood, you may already have a couple of sides on your wood that are either planed or jointed. So this can give you a head start. So now that we have these pieces of wood planed down to the same thickness, now let's mark up these pieces of wood so that we can figure out how we're gonna lay out this mallet. So the way that I wanna lay out this mallet is I want this beautiful leopard wood to be exposed on the exterior. And I wanna use the zebra wood as the handle. And then I want the core of the mallet to be made out of this maple. So first off, I wanna get a feel for how long I want this handle to be. And if I place my leopard wood at different points on this mallet, I can figure out exactly how long I want it to be. Once I'm comfortable with the length, I can then strike a line. Once I have that line struck, I then can go over to the miter saw to cut down the handle. Next up, I wanna take that handle and figure out how thick I want it. And in my case, I think I wanna go about an inch and a half. So I'm gonna rip this down to size on the table saw. Now that we have a rough cutout of the handle, I wanna start thinking about the core of this mallet, which is gonna be this maple. Since we only have the thickness of this leopard wood to work with, we wanna rip down the leopard wood and the maple to the same width. So what I'll do is I'll place my leopard wood into my table saw and move the fence over until I can determine the thickness of this leopard wood. And in this case, it's three inches thick. So what we're gonna do now is take the maple and rip it down to the same width. Now that we have the leopard wood and the maple cut to the same width, I now want to determine how wide I want my mallet to be. And just to be safe, I'm going to go with seven inches on both the leopard wood and the maple. Then we're going to cut the maple in half. So let's go do that over at the miter saw. So first off, we'll cut our maple wood. Since this maple wood will be the core of the mallet, I want to cut this right in half. And this doesn't have to be precise, as we've got about an inch and a half wiggle room from the handle of this mallet. So let me get my tape measure, we'll cut this in half. Now that we have the maple core of this mallet cut out, we're now gonna move on to the leopard wood. And if you remember, we're gonna cut it seven inches long. Then we're gonna use that cutoff and create a second piece the exact same width. So let's do that right now. So now that we have our first piece of leopard wood cut down to size, we're gonna place it on the remainder of the leopard wood and strike a line. Now that that's done, we can cut down our second piece to size. So now that we have all of our wood roughly cut to size, we can begin to see how this is gonna take shape. We'll place our maple on that leopard wood and we'll sandwich in the zebra wood. Then we can place our last piece of leopard wood on top. And this will be the basic structure of the mallet. So now that we have an idea of how this mallet's gonna take shape, I now wanna to begin to glue up the core. And in order to do this, I'm gonna get a couple of clamps and use some wood glue and CA glue. 
So the first thing we want to do is to find the exact center of this leopard wood. And in order to do this, I simply took a ruler from each corner and struck a line to find the exact center. Then I took my square and struck a line right at that center. The next thing that I did is I struck a line at the very center of this handle. And I know it's very hard to see on the zebra wood, but there's a little line at the very center. So now that I have a center line on the handle and a center line on the leopard wood, I now can roughly line up the handle to the leopard wood. Once I have that in place, I now can take my maple piece and line it up to that handle. The next thing that I want to do is to make sure all the sides are flush on the front and the back. Once I'm comfortable with that, I'll strike a line. Now what that line will do will give us an approximate reference point for where we need to line up our maple when we're gluing it to the leopard wood. Now that we have everything lined up, I'm going to place three stripes of wood glue on this maple, carefully avoiding the interior edge of the maple, as we don't want glue squeeze out to interfere with the handle. Then I'm going to place two stripes of CA glue on the maple and some activator on the leopard wood. So let's do that next. And if we take a closer look, you can see there's zero squeeze out on the interior, but there's a little bit on the exterior. And that's fine because we're going to cut this down. Now I'm just going to take a couple of clamps and clamp this up. Once we have it clamped up, we can let it sit for about 45 minutes. While we're letting that glue set up, I want to start working on the handle. And one of the first things we need to do is to figure out where the mount lands on the very top of this handle. The second thing that we need to do is to figure out where we want a comfy grip on this handle. So let's get started with that. So while our glue is setting up, I want to place my handle in the position that it's going to be. Then I'm going to take my pencil and strike a line on that handle to show me where the mallet will end. And you can see from here, the mallet will come down this far. Now that we have an idea where the top of the mallet is going to land on the handle, I now want to place my hand at the bottom so that I can get a lot of leverage with this mallet and figure out where I want to place four notches for my fingers. So let's do that next. So what I'm going to do here is grip on to the very bottom of the handle, and then I'm going to place a line where each one of my fingers intersects the handles. This will give us a rough idea of where we want to place some little notches in that handle so it's very comfortable. Once we have these lines, I then can use my artistic skills to roughly lay out where I want these divots to be in the handle. And these don't have to be exact, they just have to be approximate placements. So now that we've laid out the grip of this handle at the very bottom, I now want to start thinking about the very top of the handle. And since we're going to be using a wedge to secure this handle into the mallet, I then want to cut out an area for that wedge. So we'll use that center line to cut out that area. So what I want to do now is to set my bandsaw fence so that the blade of the bandsaw will hit directly in the center of my handle. Now I want to go in about an inch and a half or maybe two, but I definitely want to make sure that I don't go as far as the edge of my mallet. So I'll turn on my bandsaw and make this cut. So now that we have that area where we're going to place our wedge, you can see how it's going to fit into our mallet. Since we're over here at the glue up, let's go ahead and glue up our second maple piece to this leopard wood. So in order to glue up the second piece of maple, we're going to use our handle as a reference piece. We're going to place it into the mallet, and then we're going to place glue on the maple in the same fashion that we did with the first piece of maple. Then we can align our second piece of maple to the handle, and we should be able to move this handle back and forth as it should have a little bit of give. The real secureness of this handle is going to come from the wedge. So let's go ahead and start that process. So while we let that glue set up, let's work on the grip of this handle. And by no means do you have to put a grip on this handle like me. You could simply put a chamfer or a round over and call this done. However, I want this to feel really good in my hand. So in order to create the grip of this handle, you could use a variety of different types of tools. You could use a rasp, you could use a spindle sander, and you could even start it off with the bandsaw. But the first thing that I'm going to do is put an eighth inch round over on each one of these corners to get me started. Now one thing I want to be cognizant of is I don't want to come too far to the very top of this mallet as I want the transition from the mallet head to the handle to look good. So over here at the router table, I've placed an eighth inch roundover bit, and I've placed a stop so that I can prevent myself from running the handle too far down and running into the head of the mallet. So let's go ahead and round over all four of these corners.
Now, just after putting that eighth inch round over on this handle, this thing is already remarkably more comfortable. Now you will notice that I did stop the router bit at approximately three and a half inches from the very top of the handle. And this is so that the head of the mallet can fit squarely with the handle. So now let's work on shaping this grip. So in order to shape the handle of this grip, I'm gonna use my belt sander. I'm gonna use the markings that I created earlier and slowly creep up on that grip. Now this is gonna take a lot of trial and error, so I'm gonna use my belt sander, feel it out, and then go back to my belt sander. So after a lot of trial and error, I finally got to a shape that I think feels great in my left hand as well as my right hand, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Now I'm gonna take a hand sander and just refine it a bit. So after a little bit of elbow grease, I finally got to a handle that fits my hand perfectly. Whether it's my left hand or my right hand, this thing feels amazing. So let's move back to the mallet head. We're gonna attach the last piece of leopard wood to the opposite side of that mallet and move forward. So once we remove the clamps, we then can apply the glue. We're gonna do the same thing here and apply three rows of wood glue and two rows of CA glue. Then we'll spray some activator on the leopard wood and attach it all together. Now it's time to place some clamps on this and let it set. So it's the next day and I let this mallet head set up overnight. So we're gonna take this out of the clamps and move on to the next step. So now that we have the mallet head out of clamps, I'm gonna place the handle into the mallet head. The next thing that we wanna do is to cut five degree angles on each side so that we can have a nice angle when we're striking our workpiece. So let's go over to the miter saw and make those cuts. So the nice thing about making this cut is it's gonna clean up all of that glue squeeze out. Once we make the five degree cut on one side, we're gonna flip it over and make the five degree cut on the other side. One thing you wanna be leery of is you wanna make sure that you're starting your cut at the very tip of the mallet head. So let's get started with these two cuts and we'll move forward. So here's the mallet head after making both of those cuts. Now one thing you wanna make sure is that the hole for the mallet handle is directly in the center of your mallet. So I'll take my Polini pocket rule and just double check to make sure we're all in line. So now that we have the mallet head cut out, this thing looks pretty boxy. So what I wanna do is put a chamfered edge on any of the areas that won't be intersecting with the handle. So let's go over to the router table and put on some chamfers. So over here at the router table, I put in a chamfer bit into my router, and I've also aligned the fence with a bearing on that bit so that when I move my workpiece across the fence, that bearing does not impede with the movement of my workpiece. Now one thing to note as I make these cuts, I'm gonna start with the end grain. That way, if there's any chip out, I can clean it up when I do the long grain. So let's get started with putting the chamfers on this piece. So after making that first pass with the chamfer bit, I can definitely tell that I wanna go just a little bit deeper with that chamfer. So I'm gonna raise the router bit until I get the depth I want. So after running the mallet head through the router table a couple of times, I was finally able to get a chamfer that I liked. Now there's one thing you need to consider. A lot of these corners have weird angles and you're not able to get that over at the router table. So I'm just gonna take a hand sander and try to match those chamfers with the hand sander. Lastly, I'm just gonna smooth out the rest of the surfaces so we can move on to the next step. Now you'll also notice here that I broke out my block plane and this was to match some of those angles on that chamfer, just to assist me a little bit and make the sanding just a little bit easier. So after a lot of sanding, I finally got the mallet head done as well as the handle and I sanded this to 120, and I even broke out my orbital sander as there was a few spots I was having a really hard time getting. So now that we have everything sanded, we need to start thinking about the wedge for this handle. So let's go over to the bandsaw and cut a wedge. So after rummaging through my scrap pile, I found a small piece of purple heart. I'm gonna plane this down to the same thickness of the wood we used in this mallet, and then we can cut our wedge out. So let's go head over to the planer first. So now that I have my purple heart to the same thickness, I'm just gonna run it through this bandsaw and cut a couple wedges just in case I mess up on the first one. So 
So here I am over at my bench vise, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit of glue into that handle hole so that we can slide our handle in. So let's get started with that and then we'll move on. So now that I have wood glue in the center of that handle hole, I'm now going to stick the handle through that hole. Now that I have my mallet handle into the head of the mallet, I'm now going to take my little wedge and put some wood glue on it. Once that's done, I can slide it into place. And after that, I'll take a little hammer and tap it in. With the wedge in place, I'll clean up any glue squeeze out and wait for this glue to dry. So now that I've let the glue dry up for a bit, I've wrapped the area around the wedge with some painter's tape. And that's because I'm going to take a fine tooth flush trim bit and cut off that wedge. So let's do that right now and go very slowly as I don't want to scar up the top of this mallet. So now that I have that flush cut, I'm simply going to take my orbital sander and sand it down. Now that we've done all of our sanding, I'm going to take some mineral spirits and a rag and just wipe this off to get all the dust off. And we should start to see the colors pop. So now that we've cleaned this mallet of all the dust, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to finish it. And to finish this mallet, I'm going to use some Danish oil. So let's go over and finish this item. Well, I couldn't be more pleased with how this mallet turned out. I absolutely love that leopard wood, and I love the way the purple heart contrasts that zebra wood, and all the woods in general. This mallet is going to be a keepsake for generations to come. Well, I know a lot of you have been asking for some more project builds, so I hope you really enjoyed this one. I know I did. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment, as it really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.